We're not even going to have to try this evening. <laughs> it is Friday night in New York City, man. <laughs> really? Really? So let's babble the fuck on. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. It is perhaps the best day ever, man. <laughs> you guys are so fucking warm and wonderful. We're here in one of the greatest cities in the world. This is a city that inspired me. I lived very, not too far away from here over in Jersey. This was the movie that, this was the city that I would look to for inspiration and whatnot. On our way here, I drove past the Angelica Film Center where I saw Slacker. That made me want to be a filmmaker. Right. Um, and But long before that, before I knew I wanted to be a filmmaker, before I, I saw Slacker, the thing that I wanted to do was comedy. Specifically, very specifically, I wanted to write for SNL. Yeah. And so I went to school up in the city of the New School for Social Research, Eugene Lang, just so that I could be close to the city. Even though like I lived fucking half an hour away in New Jersey, I moved up here just so I could be close to the city so maybe one day I could write for SNL. Mm -hmm. And I'd skip classes and I'd go to 30 Rock and I would sit on the bottom floor, man, just waiting for Lorne Michaels to walk by and be like, a fat kid looks funny. <laughs> maybe the worst idea ever to it get a job. Really, it was really bad. So coming here tonight and having like a fucking sold out comedy show on a Friday night, you guys Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I think we should have done this a long time ago. I know. <laughs> I don't know why we waited Who so knew? long. Um, that's one reason it's a great day. Uh, other reason, man. Uh... <laughs> don't start. Don't fucking start. All I'm saying is if this was the 90s, you know I'd be cast as the penguin, man. <laughs> One of the greatest things ever happened to me, and I didn't see this one fucking coming a mile away. <laughs> I, I do a fucking show called Fat Man on Batman. Yeah. <laughs> In addition to that, I spent 12 years working with the fucking dude, and I could never put two and two together and see that one glorious day, <laughs> Batman would be one of my closest friends. <laughs> Now, ordinarily, we would put this story in either the headlines or the geek news, but it is too big to ignore, so we want to start right away by talking about it. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard, <laughs> last night, DC Comics and Warner Brothers announced that they no longer give a fuck about the character of Batman. <laughs> it's big news, very big news. <laughs> President Warner Brothers said, and I quote, we no longer give a fuck about Batman. You're a raging dick. <laughs> You're like a fucking supervillain, man. Uh, this is the greatest thing that ever happened, man. A dude I know, it's fucking Batfleck, dude. It's yeah. fucking... <laughs> but for a moment, if you can, take it. Affleck. <laughs> Can you take yourself out of the equation just for a second? No! <laughs> God no, dude. I fucking bought Ben Affleck's house, so that means I own Wayne Manor now. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And we all know there's only one person who went to Wayne Manor and kicked Batman out. Good day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're Bane. I'm fucking Bane now, man. Seriously, though. Yeah. As a Batman fan, is this some casting that you, you agree with? You say, yes. You know what? I, all the time I was thinking, underbite for Batman. Are you done just giant chin? Is that what you were thinking? What is that what he's got? Oh, yeah. Well, he talked like this. <laughs> Don't you remember in Daredevil, it was like red and then just this giant chin. <laughs> Where's Electra? You she around her anywhere? <laughs> Who are you, fucking Joan Rivers, man? You know? <laughs> Commenting on a motherfucker's appearance and shit? I'm just saying, there's a lot of dudes who look more like Batman than this guy. Bullshit, he's got a Batman chin, man, and he looks exactly like fucking Bruce Wayne. He's got the cock of Batman. He's down to here, I'll tell you that much. I've seen Batman's dick. <laughs> well, that certainly should be the criteria how they cast the role. <laughs> It's down to you and, uh, geez, Jake Gyllenhaal. Could, could y'all take your pants off, please? We'd like to... I have not had this much fucking fun with Batman since. <laughs> Stop it. You're encouraging him. That's not what we need tonight. <laughs> the good times are back, man. This is a Batman you could be happy about and shit. This is good times, dude. Except for the petition that was launched today asking Warner Brothers to change their mind. I saw that. I saw that. And they have something like 10,000 signatures now. Yeah. Well, I'm not one of them. I'm all for this idea. I think it's great. Of all the names that were bandied about when they started talking about this casting, that was not one I expected to see. Why so not? many promising, promising names. And then they said his name. <laughs> Who would you rather, who would you have picked for Batman? There's so, uh, just so many. Uh, who's, who could be better at Batman than De De Ben Affleck? RuPaul, RuPaul. <laughs> RuPaul would be a better Batman than Ben Affleck. Look, I would pay to see that version of Batman yes. too. <laughs> better, uh, Marley Matlin would be better as Batman <laughs> than Ben Affleck. I would pay. <laughs> Quickly to the Bendmobile. <laughs> you, sir, are going to hell, number one. It's number fine. two, I'd pay double to see fucking Bat Marley Maitland. That'd yeah. be amazing. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. These are our options. She can't fire the grappling gun because she's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Ben Affleck sure is going to be Batman. Yes. I blame you. Why? Because I'll I, take the credit I for that. I think you planted this seed years ago in that film Jersey Girl. <laughs> Amongst the many things I blame Jersey Girl for, this is, <laughs> this is one of them. <laughs> Remember that scene where he's driving his little girl in the, uh, in the sweeper? Yes. In the sweeper? Can we have that, do we have that clip? Can we, sh can we throw that up there? Can we go see Cats? Absolutely not. Why? Because Cats was the second worst thing that ever happened in New York City. Besides, Cats closed three years ago. Oh, cool. oh, you're riding the Batmobile, aren't you? How cool is that? Oh my God. Even his own daughter doesn't want him to be Batman. <laughs> He's driving that saying, oh, Batmobile, that sounds pretty good coming out of my giant underbite. <laughs> I, um, I didn't see it coming. I had no fucking clue, but I'm happy. I think he's, I've, I've been on record many times saying, like, I think Ben Affleck can be any, uh, anything he wants. He can act in anything. I think he's an amazing actor. I said he could even play the shark in a Jaws remake. So yeah. this, is, this one I didn't see coming, but only because he seemed beyond this sort of thing at this point. Like, he did his superhero movie with Daredevil. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> We need to send a print of that over to WB real quickly. So, have you guys seen Daredevil? Did anybody bother to screen that for the brass before we made this decision? I know, but think about it, man. That's practice makes perfect. He got it all out of his system and shit. So going into his next vigilante, he'll be, he'll be smooth. This dude has loved Batman going as far back as I can remember. Uh, he only did fucking Daredevil because he loved Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. He's like, they're never going to make another Batman because this is after Batman had nipples and shit like that. Right. <laughs> So he was like, Daredevil's cool. I mean, Miller wrote him as well, so he liked the character, but it was always rooted in Batman. The house, his house that I did wind up buying and shit, when, he, when I first got there, 
Uh, first uh, saw the place, it was uh, 4th of July, 2001. He was touring me through the place. He's like, come here, come here, I gotta show you my fucking room. Brings me into the room, he goes, look, look at this. And there's a side office, office room, and there's this beautiful bookcase and shit. And I was like, that's nice, man, a lot of books. And he goes, no, no, look. And he reached under, and he clicked something, and all of a sudden, the bookcase went <laughs> And fucking literally moved. Wow. And I was like, no. <laughs> you built a fucking bat cave? And he was like, I built a bat cave entrance. <laughs> What's behind it? Just a giant mirror? <laughs> when you went in behind the bookcase, yeah. it was a panic room. It was very oh. small. There was a little TV in it, a phone, and a safe and shit, and some video games in case you got trapped, in case somebody <laughs> sure. came in there or something like that. But still, it was like, he's always been into the notion. He'll, he'll honor the character. I honestly think the dude's a great actor. And in here, it makes absolute sense. A lot of people are like, he's going to fuck it up. They're like, Val Kilmer or Clooney. Bullshit, man. This dude has been to the bottom, okay? He's been in a couple of Kevin Smith pictures. He knows. <laughs> That's true. He knows what it's like to be, you know, he got kicked around for a few years. People were like, fuck him and shit. Then he crawl, clawed his way back to respectability and shit. His movie won Best Picture last year, mm -hmm. uh, the, just this year. So this, this is a dude who's been to the bottom, been to the top. I, I know him, I don't think he's looking for a return to the bottom, so I, he's a strategic motherfucker, so I think for him, he's like, no, this is a smart move. I'm not directing it, I'm in it. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, I haven't thought, well, I, all right, I did speak to him about all the internet controversy and shit. I talked to him real quick, because I was like, I'm going to Babylon, you want to make a statement? And he did, this is the fucking statement. Yeah. <laughs> I told him, he said he hadn't read the news, I said a lot of people on the internet are hating on this idea. So, uh, what is your fucking thoughts on it? And this was uh, his thoughts about all the people hating it on the movie on the internet. This is a site populated by militant movie buffs. Sad, pathetic little bastards living in their parents' basement downloading scripts and what they think is inside information about movies and actors they claim to despise and can't stop discussing. This is a site... Sorry. <laughs> and to think I asked you to pull yourself out of the equation for a minute. <laughs> What was I, I can't. Thinking? This is the closest I've ever come to Batman in my life and shit. It's kind of amazing. But I think he'll be a great fucking choice. There's no way he drops the ball. Like, here, remember in the last fucking movie where B Bane was like, so you've come back to die with your city. Yes. And Batman just could have fucking said anything or could have said nothing and just rocked him in the fucking face. Mm -hmm. Like, bullshit, you talk, I'll fucking fight. But instead, what did he say? He goes, no, I come back to stop you. One of the worst lines in cinema history. On, on during the era of the bat fleck, that will never happen. He no. will always have something to fucking say in that moment where you're gonna be like, that's smooth, that's Affleck. I'm hoping this movie will take place during the eight years that Batman is retired in the last <laughs> film. <laughs> Just Ben sitting in, a, in an easy chair crying. <laughs> Because he, he cries really good. He's a good crier, I'll give him that. That's what you want in a Batman, a guy who can cry in the drop of a fucking hat. Some people are asking, dude. <laughs> no, no, I tell you, it's gonna be good, I promise. I train this kid, I train, I'm like fucking Liam Neeson, man. <laughs> nope. But a lot of people on the internet are going, why the fuck would he do this? He's got like fucking utter respectability, the Argo Oscar, and she could do anything he wants. Right. Why would he do this? Uh, I, I think it's very simple. I have not spoken to him by any stretch. He has a spot. I talked about it last week on Babylon. I was like, I, he went to visit Lindsay Lohan in rehab. I'm like, I haven't heard from him in three years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now I hope to get him on Fat Man on Batman at least. But uh, this would be my speculation, man. This is what I would imagine. Um, if you go up to an eight-year-old kid mm -hmm. and you say, who's Robert Downey Jr.? They go, Iron Man. Right. If you go up to an eight-year-old kid and say, who's Ben Affleck? They look at you blankly or they say, all right, go fuck yourself. You know, there's, a, <laughs> there's just not the same connection there, man. And so if you look at Robert Downey Jr.'s brilliant career over the last 10 years with all these Marvel flicks, he went from a dude who was kind of considered tarnished goods at one point to a couple films of respectability, and then suddenly, you know, he was the linchpin of a new universe of the Marvel films. Mm -hmm. um, he became the beacon, all that charm, all the training, his entire life of being Robert Downey Jr., being a charming actor and shit, 
boom, came to bear with that fucking character. Mm -hmm. Same thing's going on with him. I would imagine he looks at it like, I could probably Robert Downey Jr. this, man. I don't have to fucking direct this. I'm just an actor in this movie. It's Superman and Batman. It's not Batman alone. There's going to be lots of help. Who the fuck's not going to see the movie? That's my thought. If you're Ben Affleck, you're going, okay, i got to eat shit for, what, a month on the internet and take it from a bunch of people? Oh, who like, a you month. You're so cute. <laughs> Okay. This movie's not coming out until uh, 2015, I think All right, it is. let's make it fucking two years straight of okay. fucking eating shit on now the I'm internet. Now at, <laughs> at the end of the At the end of the day, man, everyone in the world is going to see that movie. They're, going to talk, they're talking about calling it uh, Superman versus Batman. Right. Once that happens, that movie instantly makes $2 billion, good or fucking bad. It'll make $2 billion worldwide, I swear. Mark my fucking words. 2015 happens. Superman versus Batman makes two billion easily. Why wouldn't you want to be Batman in that? Somebody's gonna be Batman, why not you? And he believes he could do a good job. He's not sitting there going, I can't wait to fuck this up. <laughs> Can you please fucking make the villain the Jay Loker? You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> that already happened one now time. Now that I go see. <laughs> I'm telling you, he will not drop the fucking ball. Like, the dude is, uh, at this point in his career, struggling to get back to where he is, and fucking, he's at the top of the mountain in a world where fucking everybody, when Argo won, there wasn't anybody sitting there going, go fuck yourself. People were totally back on his side, man. Right. And it was weird to watch, like, in one full swoop, where they're like, uh, Ben Affleck's Batman. Everyone's like, fuck him in the ass! <laughs> he's gotta go! What is Matt Damon Robin and shit? So right away, of course, he's, he's like, goes from where the, pre the place where everyone's like, utter respectability to like, boom, he could take it. This is a dude who took being kicked in the teeth for a long time. I doubt he's even paying attention to the stuff on the internet. I think he's got... Well, then we need to be louder the then, if he's not paying attention. <laughs> Do you really, you <laughs> honestly feel like it's not a I good... I think it's a bad, bad choice. Really, bad, really? Bad casting decision, yeah. What, a, what, what about a bug? I think, I think he's an okay actor. I think he does uh, serviceable work in the right projects. <laughs> I gotta fucking get you on my movie posters, dude. Serviceable work in the right project. <laughs> Ralph Garman. <laughs> but I think he's a it's little... It's like fucking, this is a movie. <laughs> Kinda. Ralph Garman. I just think he lacks the gravity. I think he, he lacks the intensity. Oh shit, go look at Dogma. He has some really fucking intense scenes in Dogma. <laughs> But I won't even point you God's to that. God's really mean to us. God's really mean to us. He's so mean. No, you're thinking of Matt Damon. Ben was a lot more serious. No, it, you don't even have to look at my work. Just look at some, look at, there's an awesome uh, performance he gave in Changing Lanes. Very dark, very fucking like uh, 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 um, uh, combative, self-combative. He has a, uh, this fantastic monologue that he does at the end of the movie with his wife. Watch that flick. Why? Watch. Uh, I mean, you can look at his own movies. He's he's pretty damn good in his flicks and whatnot. A lot of people on the net are like, let him direct. Don't let him be Batman. To be honest, I I between that character and a plethora of other characters, I always saw more of a Superman myself. I think he has the classic looks of a Superman. That part's taken. They're offering him Batman. He'd be stupid not to do it, dude. Like I said, they could put me in the fucking suit and make two billion dollars, man. <laughs> They might make three, because people are like, I gotta fucking see this. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen that much latex before. <laughs> you guys are off by a letter in that title. I like the idea you had from before when you made that comic book after, uh, after uh, Mallrats. Remember the, the, the comic book cover you made featuring I did. him? I called this back in 95. I predicted Ben Affleck as fucking... Can we throw up the cover of the comic book that Kevin created for him? That's, <laughs> that's the, butt, the butt man adventures. From the opening credits of Mallrats. Even back then, I was like, this guy's a Bruce Wayne. He's a total Bruce Wayne, man. And Batman, come on, what's... I, I, with all due respect to everyone who's ever worn the cowl, you know, you put on the mask and you pick a voice and fucking the mask does most of the work for you, man. You See, it's that kind of thinking that got <laughs> us where we are today. You just gotta be able to kind of brood and stuff, you know, or... Not every Batman is brooding, I'll have you know. <laughs> Hello, good people of Gotham. <laughs> Waited my whole life to say that in the real Gotham, and here we are. Lovely.
You see Adam West sent out a tweet to Ben today? Did you see that? No, what did he say? He said, uh, along with the roll comes a lot of uh, heat and perspiration by deodorant, he said. Oh, that's cute. Because he's going to stink. That's why. <laughs> oh, he's going to rock. He's going to fucking afflict it, dude. Did you uh, see the Richard Dreyfus tweet? I thought that was adorable. No. Richard Dreyfus, Dreyfus put up a tweet. He goes, you, you work real hard on an audition. You try your hardest. <laughs> then they cast the young guy. See? <laughs> What do you think the voice is gonna sound like? Here's my, this would be my, uh, if I had his, no. Stupid crime. <laughs> Dude, it's not fucking Taylor Lautner, it's. <laughs> it's Affleck. Stupid crime, my parents all got murdered in junk. <laughs> Just saying he's a little light, a little light for my taste. Is he? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. For me, I'm fully committed. The voice is the thing I want to ask you about, though. The voice. Here would be my vote for the voice. Because right. a lot of people, even as much as they love uh, uh, Bale and, and Nolan's Batman, everyone picked universally on the voice with, Where's the trigger? You yeah. never give the trigger to an ordinary trigger. <laughs> no fucking, nobody's going that. If now, but every actor does the voice differently. Like when they're Bruce Wayne, they speak in their normal voice. As Batman, they drop it a few octaves, octaves or try something else. Right. I would suggest they go for something this time where they give him a fucking, like he says, I build in a voice, a little modulator, lays against his throat. Because then they can fuck around with his voice and post and make it creepy and shit like that. Nobody's done that yet. Mm -hmm. But I think I know what the fucking Ben Bat voice is going to sound like, man. I got it right here. But Affleck was the bomb in Phantoms. <laughs> Could you imagine, man? He's fucking got you. You fucking mug somebody, grabs you, he holds you over a fucking roof, edge of a roof of a building and shit, and then all of a sudden he fucking says, But Affleck was the bomb in Phantoms. What? You don't want to see that Batman? <laughs> I didn't know how you'd take it, too. I remember, like, when I heard You didn't? It. Everyone else in this room knew how I was going to take it. I didn't. I thought it could go either way. I thought you might be like, right on, good choice. I didn't know that you would be so against it. How little you know me. <laughs> I guess so at the end of the day. After three years. By the way, this is our three-year anniversary of doing yeah. Hollywood Batman. <laughs> Happy anniversary, sweetheart. Happy anniversary to you, sir. Give that penis a sandwich. Yeah. All right. Let's get on with the fucking show, man. That's enough about Ben. He well, we can all tell already from the opening of the show how high you must be. <laughs> The only thing we don't know is what you're smoking tonight. What strain is Kevin on? What strain is Kevin smoking tonight? <laughs> what are you smoking tonight, Kev? I don't know. <laughs> that explains so much. And I'll, I'll Besides tell Ben you Affleck's why. dick, what are you smoking tonight? <laughs> Dude, forgive me for doing a little dick sucking, man. I'm trying to get fucking Jason Mewes hired as the Riddler. <laughs> um, as most travelers of the green know, when you're out of town, man, you're at the mercy of what comes your way. And yeah. so whatever comes my way, I'm like, is there poison in it? They're like, no. I'm like, all right. <laughs> but it's very lovey-dovey. It makes me very friendly. Yeah, yeah I can tell. <laughs> All right. Uh, each and every week, we also like to give some shout-outs to people who have come particularly long distances or are celebrating special occasions. It's a segment we call The Shout-Outs. It's a shout-out Kevin and Ralph, so get your cock out. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're in New York. Come on, class it up a little bit, will you? My bad, my bad. Uh, by the way, record number of shout-outs were sent to us for this show tonight, and uh, most of you are going to be horribly disappointed, so <laughs> just keep that in mind. Uh, Michelle Ucruyo? Hi, Michelle. I want to give Michelle a shout-out because she's here by herself tonight. She had to the come fuck back up, tonight. really? Are you yeah. alone? Yeah. She Let's says, I'm get flying. you laid, man. 
Are you kidding me? This is the day that Ben Affleck became Batman. Anything's possible, man. The Berlin Wall hasn't have... fallen. It's not <laughs> yes. VE day. It's a geek holiday. Have you ever wanted to have sex with a quasi-celebrity? <laughs> I can hook it up. Michelle writes, I would have brought along my best friend Virginia and her husband Jake, but they are unavailable due to Virginia's vagina being a ticking time bomb. <laughs> that sounds horrible. <laughs> you should call Homeland Security. Uh, she is due any moment to give birth to their first child, Beatrix. As oh. the fathers of daughters yourselves, could you give them some advice on keeping their little Beatrix from turning into a Kim Kardashian or a Lindsay Lohan? <laughs> No impressions needed since my favorite celebrities are you guys. Aww. Aww. We could totally hook up that sex thing, man. <laughs> she doesn't even want impressions, I know. Dude. We could totally wobbly H her. The real Ralph. No, no, no. I'll just watch from under a glass table and masturbate. <laughs> And while I'm doing it, dude, I'm gonna be playing this fucking song. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, well, Kevin's the, the, the father of a teenager. Those are the difficult years. My daughter's still a toddler. That's easy. I just have to distract her with sugar and, uh, <laughs> and Hello Kitty things. But I am trying to steer her towards lesbianism. I've decided to make a, a concerted effort trying to make her uh, uh, lesbian because I just can't picture any man ever touching her. You know, it's funny, being a man, once you have a daughter, it changes your perspective on everything. Not at all, if you're a good man, it doesn't change a fucking thing. Oh, well, it does for me. <laughs> anyway, I just keep telling, I just keep pointing to my penis saying, bad, bad, bad. <laughs> so, I, so when she's in court one day, <laughs> And they're pointing to the Ralph doll. She's like, he used to point here and say, bad, bad, yeah. bad. And sadly, my wife does the same thing about my penis. She keeps pointing <laughs> at me, going, bad, bad. So that's my advice. Uh, just steer her towards lesbianism. Um, I'm going to counter that because I tried to steer my daughter towards lesbianism. At 14, she's interested in nothing but boys. Yeah. Even now, I'll sit around the dinner table and be like, mm, I love pussy. <laughs> yeah. It didn't work, man, so... You know what, just be the person... Uh, I mean, this doesn't go for women. Women know exactly how to raise a fucking another woman, so you need no advice there. But uh, for a man in the relationship, man, you just want to be the person that eventually your daughter winds up falling in love with or is least interested or something like that. Right. You can't fault yourself if she brings home an asshole. That meant that she watched you be an asshole to her mom somewhere along the line. So just treat her mother like fucking gold, everything else will follow. Even if her mother's an overbearing bitch, just treat her like... <laughs> treat her like, well, never tell the kid that part. Just keep it inside All and right. get angina and shit like that. But in front of the kid, it's nothing but love and flowers and shit like that. And then she'll always pick the right guy. Good advice. Thank you. All right. John and JC from Brooklyn. Are you guys here? John and JC? Holy shit. <laughs> oh, that was close. <laughs> What's up, boys? <laughs> Get out of here. You waited Wait, three, three years, years for this? <laughs> Make it good. <laughs> Fuck yourself. Dude, be happy. You know what usually follows I waited three years for this? A gun. <laughs> I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> Welcome, man. I waited three years for this as well. Uh, JC and John are from Brooklyn, representing. <laughs> This is rare. We got this last week, but we rarely get a chance to actually fucking be so close to the people that wrote to yeah, us. Yeah, there they are. I'm just going to stare at you creepily. <laughs> Which one of you wrote it? John. You're the writer? Yeah. Read his letter. All right. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend of two and a half years hasn't listened to a full episode of Babylon yet. Hold the thought. Which one's the girlfriend? JC. You've oh, never Jazzy? Is it J Jassy? Jassy? Your name's Jassy? And you've never listened to an episode of the show? I've had that fully, though. Only a little bit? Because you're like, there's never enough talk about Ben Affleck. Yeah. <laughs> Go back to reading. Go back to reading. I think it's due to the fact that I bug her, writes John, all the time, imitating your John Travolta impression. First of all, leave it to the fucking professionals, John. 
You'll be hearing from my lawyer. <laughs> he's doing it. He's doing it. I hear him. <laughs> it's like it's happening in the wild. It's awesome. <laughs> do it again. Do it again. I don't know why, but he's singing Grease. <laughs> it would be an honor if the infamous gay ghost could tell Jassy what an episode full of Babylon is like. Your biggest fan, John, Garmy Brooklyn Division. <laughs> what? <laughs> why? <laughs> Where? <laughs> so weird. But wait, first then you're killed and you die, and then your spirit rises. Boo. <laughs> there we go. It's so refreshing when fucking a boyfriend writes in and he's not like, can you convince my girl to give me anal? Yeah. <laughs> We're light on the anal tonight. Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Other than Ben Affleck taking you in the hinder, that's all. <laughs> that's our only representation. Fuck you, one of us is visiting the bat cave. <laughs> It ain't gonna be Mr. Sourpuss. <laughs> Anthony, Pete, Rachel, and Anthony. Are you guys here? You don't fucking care at all about this show, do you? <laughs> Everyone else has been very excited, and you're like, yeah, we're here. <laughs> They're like, too much Affleck. <laughs> Anthony writes, uh, here with my friends Pete, Rachel, and Anthony. Although he shares the same name with me, he is significantly lamer. You'll be able to tell us apart because the lame Anthony is not the one is the one not drinking because he doesn't drink at all. I'm with you. Why? Why is that bad? Get the fuck out of this nightclub. No, no, I'm with you, man. His first beer. My my work here is done. <laughs> Fucking dude looks like a deer in headlights. He's like, why am I being forced to drink? <laughs> because like, it's awesome. School. That's why. No, he looked like it was high school all over again, man. Don't worry, you don't have to drink if you don't want. Yes, However, you do, Anthony. No, no, no. But if you want to fucking smoke weed. Could the, could the Germans please tell him to stop being such a pussy and have a beer with his friends tonight? Okay. Yeah, it's important to be drinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, beer. Yeah. Beer is very important in, uh, in our social history and all these things. Yeah, yeah, we have an entire holiday for it. Yeah, to yeah, Oktoberfest. Yeah, 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 yeah. If it wasn't for beer, ugly people would never have sex. Yeah. It's very important. And people would make wise decisions always. Yeah, yeah. And nobody would be texting their exes in the middle of the night. Yeah, it's important. Why are you so unhappy, Anthony? <laughs> More beers for Anthony, I think. I don't think he wants the beer. He looks like the Fuhrer in the bunker just before the end. <laughs> Get my German Shepherd out of here! We saw him go every the same. How about the Travis and Melissa and TJ? Are you guys here today? That's what I'm talking about. Holy fuck. I felt like Ted Nugent for a minute, man. That was a way worthier woe than I deserve. Thank you. Uh, TJ from Oakdale, Long Island with his friends Travis and Melissa. I just turned 25. I'm here with my two best friends, Travis and Melissa, who just got married in May. Aww. Congratulations. Congrats. And they said it wouldn't last, and yet here they are. Sometimes I feel like I spend more time crashing on their floor than I do in my own home. Well, that must make them very happy as newlyweds, TJ. <laughs> really, is TJ on the floor again? I did not sign up for this when I married you. I think he's masturbating. <laughs> I'm incredibly lucky to have them in my life. They aren't very familiar with the show, but they're huge Batman fans. So if Bane could please let them know how much I love them and how much I appreciate everything they do for me. Okay. TJ what? writes to Travis and Melissa. So wait, so this is Travis and oh, Melissa. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> I gotta get out a pie chart and now it's supposed to be a diagram. And it's from TJ. Yes, <laughs> to Travis and Melissa. There's only three people involved in the fucking email. One of them wrote it. That takes one out of the equation. Talk to the other two. 
You're making this fucking hard on me, man. I didn't know I'd be doing math tonight. Oh, let me get in character, man. Lion face, ah, lemon face. Travis and Melissa. It seems that TJ is always over at your house. I smell a three-way. Send us pictures. Wouldn't that be painful, a three-way like that for them, Mr. Bain? Why? Oh. <laughs> Why, Ralph Garman? Just, would it be painful, I'm just saying? A uh, three-way? Yes. <laughs> With whom? It would be very painful for you. Oh, it would be very <laughs> painful. For you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> How about I'm Pat and Steph? Are you guys here tonight? My name is Pat, my wife is Steph. We moved to New York about a year ago, a year and a half ago, but we're both native Philadelphians and we miss our hometown a lot. <laughs> that got a worse reaction than Ben Affleck as Batman. Yeah. They write, could Rocky Balboa please tell us what Philadelphia, how Philadelphia is such a great city, babble the fuck on, Pat and Steph. Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> you were from Philadelphia, you're living there. It was like a good city and all. And then you moved to New York. It's like, you know, Philadelphia been good to you as a home and all. And a lot of good people there who probably love you. And then you leave, then you leave, you go to another city. Well, you don't like my home? Well, my home stinks! You don't like my home? You're greedy and lazy! <laughs> yeah, that's right. Can you believe Ben Affleck is Batman? <laughs> He's like mentally irregular. You shut your mouth. <laughs> and uh, lastly, Deborah writes in. She's here with her boyfriend, Frank. Are you guys here, Deborah? I'm right up front. That's uh, very uncomfortable for us. <laughs> I know. She looks mortified. Yeah, wait. He made, he made you write this letter? This oh, is, you're this like is that from little Deborah. kid in the water in Jaws. You're like, he made me do it. <laughs> this is going to be bad. I'm going to look right at you while it happens. <laughs> and don't ask me where my other hand is. <laughs> it's right here, it's right here. They've been together for a year. She writes, a year ago, I went to a Doctor Who premiere held in the city here. I met a lot of people that day, one of whom showed up in a Doctor Who shirt and some sexy Dalek socks. Who, which one? Aww. I bet you didn't know when you were dressing that day, you were gonna get fucked for it. Because no one wearing a Doctor Who shirt and Dalek <laughs> socks has ever been laid ever in the history of mankind. It's like hitting the fucking Powerball lottery of sex. <laughs> um, it was geeky love at first sight, writes Debra. A year later, and he still hasn't had, had any luck getting his sonic screwdriver up my chocolate TARDIS. Oh. <laughs> she sold you out, bitch. <laughs> She's pointing going, he wrote this. <laughs> because it is definitely not bigger on the inside, she writes about her... Uh, <laughs> That was a good line. If he wrote it, that was funny. Yeah, it was pretty strong. Uh, we're celebrating our one-year anniversary. It'd be awesome if David Bowie could wish us a happy anniversary. Oh, yeah. Sure, why not? Why not? Happy anniversary, you geeks. Happy anniversary, Hoovians. Happy anniversary to you. It's so nice when geeks get to have sex. Happy anniversary to you, to Deborah and to Frank too. Happy anniversary to you. <laughs> Happy anniversary, Deborah. Happy anniversary to Frank. You're two geeks who found each other at a Doctor Who premiere. 
Happy anniversary, Deborah. Happy anniversary to Frank. All right, that's enough. Even though we've never done a show here, I wish I could say I've never done that in New York before, but... Yeah. <laughs> well, we are in Chelsea. <laughs> we also get emails from all around the world. Featuring Kevin's reactions. First email is from a listener, John. He said, with... Sylvester Stallone firing Bruce Willis from Expendables 3. Yeah. We should have seen this coming. Apparently, Willis feels bad about things and is trying to make amends. Okay. Have you seen this photograph on the internet? No. Do we have that picture of Bruce Willis trying to make things right? He's, uh, he's coming clean. Let's throw up that shot of Bruce Willis. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to make amends. <laughs> You're great and lazy! That's right. You put the sign on, huh? that's right. You had me, dude, for a second. I was just like, that'd be so awesome. That'd yeah, like fun. Bruce Willis ever feels bad about anything I he know, ever does, yeah. ever. True. Last week, we showed a video of these two... Oh, my God. Why did I never think of that before? Who said it? You? Throw it out there, loud. What was it? Douche Willis. Douche Willis. <laughs> so obvious. <laughs> it was right there. I never yeah. thought about it. Uh, last week we showed that video of those two little girls trying to audition for uh, Britain's Got Talent. <laughs> yeah. And, and their, their mother, mother barged into the room and said, Which one of you took a shit and didn't flush? <laughs> Apparently it's become quite the internet phenomenon. Uh, Mike in Liverpool, England writes, uh, Heard you guys talking about that video last week. I was laughing hysterically, had to search for it YouTube and myself, and I came across this version, which I think you'll like. Seeing that Breaking Bad is now in its final season. The toilet flush mom showed up when Hank learned the truth on Breaking Bad. Check it out for yourselves. Here's the video. Does somebody not know how to flush a toilet after they've had a shit? Well, it was fucking one of yes. Disgusting! Yeah. <laughs> it's worse than the real thing. <laughs> and after listening to last week's awesomeness of Harrison Ford singing Mana Mana, writes JT of <laughs> Manahoy City, Pennsylvania. We did it. We, uh, someone wrote and said, I love the song Mana Mana from the Muppets, but I keep hearing Harrison Ford sing it, and we did that last week. Um, JT writes, For the love of all things holy, could we please hear Al Pacino do the Mana Mana song? <laughs> Your wish is our command. Here we go. Oh, mana mana. Mana mana. Mana mana. Mana mana. Ooh, wow. There we go. Pacino would have been a better Batman. I'd like to see Pacino. I just love, I love your, whoa. Oh. Uh, along those lines, this email kicks us off for Babel Story Time, your favorite children books read in the voices of your favorite celebrities. Babel Story Time, it's Babel Story Time. Listen up, you fucking fucks, it's Babel Story Time. Gather round, kitties. Drew Helmick writes, it would be funny as hell to hear Charlton Heston reading the children's classic, Everyone Poops. <laughs> Fair enough. Ah. An elephant makes a big poop. <laughs> a mouse makes a tiny poop. A one-hump camel makes a one-hump poop. A two-hump camel makes a two-hump poop. Only kidding. 
Ah. There you go. Each and every week we say goodbye to some people in show business who had careers and left us too soon. In this particular case, it's our weekly edition of the Tinseltown Stiffs. And now, another edition of Tinseltown Stiffs. They will be missed. This was sad news this week. Uh, Lee fun. Thomas Young, I don't know if you're familiar with him or not. Yeah. He was on... Uh, Thompson has yelled out from the uh, back. I'm sorry. Lee Thompson Young, my bad. Um... He was on Rizzoli and Isles. That's the, currently sh the show he's yes. currently working on. But everyone remembers him as the famous Jet Jackson, if you watched that show on the Disney, <laughs> Disney Channel for many years. He was also in the movie version of Friday Night Lights. Really talented actor. A lot of charisma. Who was he in Friday Night Lights? Does anyone remember? Uh, he was the black kid. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on? It's been a long time since I've seen yeah, that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Lee Thompson Young was found at the age of 29 years old after taking his own life in his no, home. Oh, no. They say how? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm creepy like that for asking, but. Uh, self inflicted, inflicted gunshot wound. Oh, why? He's fucking 29. He's on Rizzoli and Isles. He's got the world by the balls. I know. He was always working. A super talented, charismatic kid. Everyone said, that worked for him said he was just a, a sweet guy, and no one really knows what the reasoning was. It, but oh, uh, he was found in his home when he didn't show up for work. They checked out his house. The police did, and they found him there. Uh, as a tribute, I just want to bring a little taste of the opening of the famous Jet Jackson, a show I enjoyed the hell out of. Here's a little video featuring Lee Thompson Young. Silverstone, the ultimate action hero. Top agent for a secret organization. Saving the world one mission at a time. Please, that's who I play on TV. In real life, I'm Jet. I remember just as a kid watching him saying, what, this guy had charisma. He just came out through the screen. He was always really watchable. Always had a great quality. He will be missed. Fuck it a win. Uh, one of the great directors. Yeah, absolutely. Give it up. One of the great movie and TV directors, Ted Post, passed away this week at the age of 95. He was one of those directors, like an old school director, who directed everything. He did uh, like 60 episodes of Gunsmoke on television. He did everything in the 60s. He worked on a western called Rawhide. Oh, get out of here. Ride him and ride. Ride. Yeah! <laughs> It was on that show that he met a young man named Clint Eastwood. And Clint Eastwood asked him after he came back from Italy and he'd done those spaghetti westerns to direct him in Hang Em High. Remember that movie, Hang Em High? Mm -hmm. uh, he went, later went on to direct the second Dirty Harry movie, Magnum Force, is also. Oh, right on, man. He is that the first time that he says, that's not when he says, go ahead and make my dad's way later. That's way later, yeah. Uh, he also directed... This is the one, is Magnum Force where he explains, like, this is the, ma the Magnum 45, blah, blah, blah. No, I think goes. that's Dirty Harry. I think that's the first that's one. That's the first one? Yeah. I don't know what happened my in bad, that movie. My bad. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I thought you were. I don't well know who prepared. Lee Thompson Young played in Friday Night Lights, <laughs> and I don't know the lines of Magnum Force. I'll go. I'll go to Wikipedia after the show. All right. He uh, directed Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Also. What? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> he did Beneath. Good guys wear black with Chuck Norris. That Fuck was him. Go back to Beneath. So that's the one with the missile underneath. That's the one with Where's the, the radioactive people. I reveal myself people. to my bomb and shit. Like that was a creepy yeah. movie. Uh, Rich Man, Poor Man, the miniseries, directed yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy worked that. all the time. But uh, Hang'em High is one of my favorite westerns, so as a tribute to him, I brought in one of my favorite scenes with Clint Eastwood from Hang'em High. Let's take a look. You don't remember me, do you? No. When you hang a man, you better look at him. Don't go for that gun, Reno. I need you alive. In that guy's defense, he only had one eye, you know? You can't expect a guy with one eye to remember what you looked like, because he's only seeing you, half of you or something, right? Is that how that works? <laughs> Are we still talking about the director? No, we're talking about the guy in the scene. In the scene, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. You don't right. see enough patches anymore. People need to wear more eye patches. Yeah, because that's not intimidating at it's all. It's a good look. And lastly, Elmore Leonard passed away this oh, week. Oh, that's a bummer. Great, great author. Passed away at 87 years old. Wrote 45 novels, over 45 novels. Many of them were uh, adapted for film and television. Mm. Justified, the series right now with Timmy Oliphant. That's one of his. 
Uh, movies, Ombre, 52 Pickup, Out of Sight, Get Shorty, Jackie Brown, 310 to Huma, Twice, Be Cool, Kill Shot, Freaky Deaky, all those made into films. Uh, Quentin Tarantino was a huge fan of his Massive work, of course. Johnny. He cites him as the inspiration for his dialogue writing as well. Get Shorty, I think, may have been one of my favorite adaptations of his, though, for a feature film. Uh, here's a little scene from that film. Martin, look at me. I am looking at you. Now look at me the way I'm looking at you. Put it in your eyes. You're mine, asshole, without saying it. Okay. How about this? What are you telling me that you're sleepy? That you want to go? <laughs> so weird. <laughs> you sleepy? <laughs> Boo. Huge bucket of win for Elmore Leonard. Yeah, what a life, what a career. Each and every week, we also take a look at TV and film. Uh, any project, uh, hundreds of pairs of eyes take a look at it before it reaches you, the audience. However, shit still slips through the cracks, and sometimes we catch it. And when we catch the shit, it's called shit that should not be. And now for shit we should not see. Here's some shit that should not be. This week's kind of, it's kind of a cheat because the, the movie in question is called Kindergarten Ninja. <laughs> so what are we showing, the whole movie? <laughs> Pretty much. Is Aaron here, by the way? Aaron? Yeah, Aaron was the one who sent this in. Thanks, Aaron, for giving me the uh, heads up for Kindergarten Ninja. It is a kid's movie. It's basically for children. Uh, it was made in the uh, 80s, early 80s. It stars NFL player Dwight Clark. probably most famous for The Catch in the NFC playoffs and when he played for San Francisco in the back of the end zone. You may remember him. Yeah. It was 80s. Let it go. Um, he plays Blade Steel in this film. A womanizing boozer who hates children and yet is somehow still the protagonist in this children's film <laughs> called Kindergarten Ninja. Dwight Clark, by the way, would be a better choice for Batman than Ben Affleck. Oh, stop it. Now, the reason I showed this, it's a low-budget uh, film. It really shouldn't be taking shots at it because it's, it's, you know, they didn't have much to work with. However, they did something just unforgivable in this film. They apparently didn't have the, uh, the time or the concern or the motivation or the budget for a slow-motion moment during one of the fight sequences. <laughs> And so, rather than slow down the footage, they had the actors act it out in slow motion. Nice. Excellent pull, sir. <laughs> See if you fall in love like I did with Kindergarten Ninja. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care how low your budget is. Just fucking don't do that. Just don't do that. It's a choice, man. He no, a it's choice. not a choice. You're not fooling anybody. That was the one director in the history of movies who were like, what if we didn't slow-mo it? What if we slow-moed it? Old school. Yeah, man. Also, every week, we take a look at some A-list actors who, at some point in their career, have turned in a less than A-list performance. It is exquisite acting. To be or not to be, that is the question. Welcome to the world of exquisite acting with Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. Uh. <laughs> Any actor, no matter how good they are, is capable of giving a bad performance. And sometimes the performances are so bad, they come all the way around and become exquisite. That is the case this week with a film from Michael Mann, a, a cult classic from 1983 called The Keep. Has anyone ever seen The Keep? I did, back in the day. I didn't know that Michael Mann directed it. Yeah, that. he directed wow. that. It's, uh, I still don't know what the fuck it's about, quite frankly. <laughs> I, I've seen this movie. It's about, they find, the Germans find this thing. It's like during World War II, and they find this thing, and there's like a creature inside of it, and they, they get Ian McKellen, legendary actor Ian McKellen, to, uh, he's, a, he's a Jewish historian, and they take him out of a concentration camp, so they help them figure out how to harness this creature, this power inside the keep. Mm -hmm. 
and he falls under its spell, and he thinks it's one thing. It turns out that it's evil. And in a very uh, classic moment in the film, he realizes that he has been working for this creature that is in inherently evil, and he's, he has this silver cross that apparently has some power over this creature. And he says, if you're, if you're really who you say you are, then you simply can take this cross away from me. But Ian McKellen does it in a style that makes it truly exquisite. Here's that scene. The keep is a prison to contain you, and you have lied, exploited, deceived, and you are the same evil as outside this place, so you prove yourself to me. You take it out of here. Do yourself. Take it! to that that it looks like Magneto, the disco years. Yeah. <laughs> He's got Max Shrek's hair from... Yes. Batman Returns. <laughs> you talented Hollywood Babylon listeners, each and every week you send in your Photoshop photographs of Kevin in places he simply does not belong. It's my favorite game. It's called Kev In. What's Kev In today? What's Kev in this week? You can go to thekevingame.tumblr.com if you want to check out some of these uh, suggestions yourself. This first one comes from Mark Dominguez from San Diego. He says, in honor of Sunday's season finale of True Blood, maybe you saw Kevin's appearance in the finale. If you didn't, uh, we have the photo of him and his man crush, Alexander Skarsgård. Can we throw that picture up? There we go. <laughs> True boner. Eric tears Kevin some new holes, it says there on the bottom. <laughs> did you see, do you watch True Blood? Uh, I, I do, I did not see the finale you see the this season. the last episode? No. For, for no explicable reason, well, he, he spoilers if you haven't seen, I'm, I know I don't have to spoil it. You see his dick. <laughs> you I'm, must have been so pleased. Holy shit, I was like, stake me, bitch. Um, <laughs> It is, I, he, you know, it's well hidden. He's sitting in a chair, so you think, like, they're not going to show it. He, he's very often in that show kind of completely naked, but they don't show the best part and shit. <laughs> and I'm really looking. Yeah. So uh, in this scene, he's sitting in this fucking chair, and you, don't th you think, once again, you're not going to see it. But he's forced to fucking get up, and when he gets up, man, he's just got a fucking snooky killer right down here, man. <laughs> Long as shit, just fucking luscious, Ralph. All right, all right. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> He's a good looking man. He's okay, all right. I just watched him in a movie. It's on a hell of a thing for you to say to me on our third anniversary, by yes. the way. Oh, are you kidding me? If I brought back fucking him to bed with us, you wouldn't be like, all right. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> Uh, Kevin and I, as I mentioned, we've been doing this show for three years, although many of you may remember us from our uh, film work in the 70s. Of course, we were uh, starring alongside of Burt Reynolds in Smokey and the Bandit, if you saw that film, as Big Enos and Little Enos. Do you remember those characters? I do, yeah. yeah. Can you throw that up there for us? There we are. <laughs> it's good times with Burt, wasn't it? Good times. <laughs> <laughs> Please wear your hair like that for the next year. Of the I will. I'm growing the mullet. That's next. And uh, Kevin's career has been up and down, of course, as we know. And... Um, do to you I'm just saying Fair we enough. all have we all have moments of, of raging success too, and you. sometimes lesser success but it's Kevin's true. a smart man sometimes he, he is divested his money you may remember his short-lived uh, short-lived restaurant chain Kev's Big Boy do you remember Kev's Big Boy can we throw that up there there we go <laughs> I always enjoyed their food I always thought it was <laughs> I always enjoyed your food thank you we make a hell of a burger yes you do Every week, of course, that's the reason we're here. We take a look at all of the entertainment news headlines with the HBO headlines. Give me head, give me head, give me headlines, and give me head. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan in the news this week. Why don't you come to your senses? 
Now I know why Lindsay has not come to her senses before now. Turns out no one gives a fuck about a sober Lindsay Lohan. Why? She was on Oprah Winfrey this past weekend. Okay. An exclusive post-rehab interview, uh, and uh, everyone said Oprah was lucky to get it. It was, it was a big get. Well, no one tuned in to watch. No, really? Less than a million viewers tuned in on Sunday night to watch Ooh. the Lindsay interview. As opposed to her interview with Lance Armstrong, where 3.2 million people tuned in for that one. Oh. And much less than her interview with Whitney Houston's daughter, Bobby Christina. 3.5 million viewers tuned in to watch the daughter of somebody who's famous. Maybe. Lindsay Lohan, less than a million. No one wanted to hear from her. Do you think it's because, like, in the case of Lance Armstrong, he had, nobody knew the details. In the case of uh, Bobby Christina, she was able to give information we didn't all know. But her, Lindsay Lohan's life has been so fucking open book. Like, what could you really sit down and interview her about that you wouldn't sit? Like, I'd be afraid if I was the other person, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I read that. <laughs> Everything she said, I'd be like, I read that. I saw that on TV. I watched the video. Like, it, like it's just, it's all out there on the record. I think she's just not as interesting when she's not loaded and airtight. That's what it is. No. <laughs> not we, we like her as a train wreck. We like her as a train wreck. She's not that interesting just as a person. I think, I, and all, I, I don't know, I think it's more over familiarity in the case of Lindsay Lohan. We know way too much about her already. And I guess a lot of people are just like, why am I going to want And also, a lot of people knew that she got paid, right? Yeah, like, right. There was a big paycheck attached. Maybe some people stayed away because they're like, fuck it, I want to change the system. It won't change, but at least maybe they made some sort of statement. Or maybe nobody like me can find fucking own on their <laughs> That's channel. <true. laughs> yeah. Because I want to watch a few Tyler Perry shows. They've teamed up for some shit, man. <laughs> I like Tyler Perry. You're seeking Tyler Perry out? <laughs> yes. I respect his model of work. He's like an indie filmmaker, man. Oh, he took man. it to... <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's Spike Lee in the back. Yeah, right? Right? <laughs> Bitter. In any event. MTV teen mom Farrah Abraham in the news again this week. She, of course, uh, did that movie Backdoor Teen Mom for yeah. Vivid... <laughs> Boo! Yay, anal sex! <laughs> that was a quick turnaround, man. She didn't Just think this. about this. Be very glad that Farrah Abraham has not been cast as Batman. There you go. Yeah. Uh, she did an interview this week saying that rumors about her being an escort are untrue. She will not have sex for money, except for that time when she had sex for money. <laughs> she also tweeted a long list of expensive items that she'd like from Amazon.com that she would like her fans to buy for her. Isn't that code online for like... The... <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Lohan in the back of the audience tonight. Uh, no, this is something that a lot of these women do, especially porn stars. They will just release a list of things they would like as gifts and their fans will buy them for them. With? Just for the hell of it? Just for the hell of it. Just no to say, strings attached. Just to say, I, I bought this girl this thing and she thanked me for it. That's that how work? desperate and lonely some people are. What does she want? <laughs> Here's the list. A $900 evening gown. $1,400 bookcase. Oh, she doesn't fucking read. <laughs> she needs something to hold on to while she's getting nailed from behind. Make it sturdy. <laughs> what are these? They're books. Oh. $700 cocktail dress. A $650, excuse me, $750 pink crystal chandelier. Well, you know, those are essentials. Yeah. <laughs> and an industrial drum of anal Lee's lubricant. <laughs> That's what I got her. Justin fucking Bieber. That's right. I caught a lot of shit this week. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> but apparently we did a story last week. We put Justin Bieber in the Hollywood Helpers. Yes. Because his public relations team went into overdrive last week announcing that his 200th Make-A-Wish Foundation meetup with some kid was record-breaking, that he had given more kids their wishes than anybody else had. Right on. And his public relations team was very proactive with that and put it all over the newspapers. It was a big story. Turns out that John Cena, the wrestler John Cena, 
has almost 400 Make-A-Wish fulfill wow. fulfillments that he has done over his career, dwarfing oh, Justin Bieber's achievements. So Bieber was even lying about the good things that he does. And if you think about the number 400, I mean, that's like over a year's worth of make-a-wishes, because they don't like, like, you got five today, you know. They no, it's one like at a time. One at a time, yeah. so that's, that's like over a year of his life has been dedicated to, at some point of the day, sitting down with some kid who may not make it, man. Hats off to fucking Cena, who knew? That was So, amazing. I wanted to give him a shout out. Yeah. Set shout the record out. straight. Hollywood helper right there. A lot of celebrities in cars uh, this week. Dick Van Dyke had to be rescued from a burning car this week. <laughs> No. Yes. No. Yes. Really? Why would I lie? I thought that was like the opening of the show. His car hit an ottoman <laughs> and burst into flames. Violet, <laughs> he goes. That rocked, man. Um, he was on the 101 freeway in California on the side of the road, and his car had burst into flames and was filled with smoke. Oh, shit. And a driver saw it came by and saw, an, they say here, an elderly man slumped over the wheel of his Jaguar and went in, opened the door, and dragged Dick Van Dyke out. To which I'm thinking, Dick Van Dyke, get out of the fucking car. Your car's on fire. Why did someone have to drag him out? Uh, he was fine, though. He's okay. And uh, the highway patrol showed up, and they put the car out, and uh, all is well. But uh, we almost lost Dick. He was, uh, he was all sooty and shit, and then they knew he was better when he was like, Chim Jimmery, Chim Jimmery, Chim Jim Jimmery. The Jaguar is a British car. I was thinking he was trying to murder him for the accent that he did in Mary Poppins. Maybe that's why <laughs> they still hold a grudge. The former uh, Partridge Family star David Cassidy got pulled over for drunk driving this week. How old is he? 63 years old. Holy shit. That's a, yeah, I'm yeah. with you, man. Did you see that? That was like a fucking... It was like a dubbed in an Asian film or something. Watch this. Holy shit. Do it again. Do it again. Uh, he, How old is he? He's 63 years old, Kevin. Holy shit! <laughs> Come on, get ancient. We got uh, Dave's mugshot, I think, to throw up there. He's looking good these days. Yeah. He looks fucking good for 63, man. He's not supposed to look like David Partridge anymore. Keith Partridge, hello. Oh, Keith Partridge, my bad, you're right. He was pulled over, this is actually a pretty great story. He was pulled over in uh, Albany. Cops noticed that he was driving with his high beams on. His nipples were very hard. <laughs> they pulled him over, uh, they gave him a sobriety test, which he failed, then they had him blow the breathalyzer. It was a 0.1, 0.08 is the legal limit, so he's, he's well over. Okay. But here's the best part of the story. Uh, the arresting officer introduced himself. The officer's name was Tom Jones. <laughs> According to the district attorney, when Jones introduced himself, David Cassidy responded with, what's new, pussycat? Oh, that's awesome. Case dismissed. You may go, Holy Mr. Cassidy. Oh. If I was the judge, I would just... If you're that quick, you can't be that true. That's right. <laughs> it's better than I could come up with. Um, a lot of people want a cardboard sign of David Hasselhoff. You heard me. He is selling iced coffee now. Have you seen these commercials with no. David Hasselhoff? Um, there's big cardboard signs of him outside of convenience stores. He's selling this brand of iced coffee. And they have become a very hot item. So much so that over the last few months, according to officials, more than 500 have been stolen from stores <laughs> along the East Coast. College kids? Or big Baywatch fans, I'm guessing, <laughs> yes. We got the sign, I think here's what, here's what the sign looks like. Well, look at that. How could you resist? I wanna steal one right now. Uh, you could, I guess you could take that home, put a giant cock in his hands and shit. <laughs> There was a 36-year-old clerk at a Cumberland farm store who saw a man and a woman stealing two of these outside of his store at 1 a.m. and putting them in his SUV. The worker ran out of the store and jumped on the SUV to stop him. <laughs> oh my God, it's like an episode of Baywatch. <laughs> was dragged for several miles and then fell and hit his head. <laughs> Let it go, buddy. He's currently hospitalized in critical condition for trying to save a cardboard David Hasselhoff. 
Dude, you work in a fucking convenience store. How, what? You're not getting paid enough to stop crime. He should have been fucking spending all of his time making movies and stuff. That's right. <laughs> he wasn't supposed to be here today. That was cute. Um, wait, I, don't you think next week's Hollywood Helper should be a story about Hop, how Hasselhoff went to visit that cat in the hospital? Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, and just I think he like, tweeted something at him. Did he? Yeah, but uh, it could not be understood because he was way drunk when he did it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a big deal anymore when a celebrity comes out and says I'm gay, but I thought this was pretty cool this week. Wentworth Miller, star of Prison Break, you familiar with him? It, it had been rumored for some time that he was gay, but he publicly admitted it this week, but for a very good reason. He was invited to the St. Petersburg International Film Festival in Russia. Hmm. I don't know if you've been following what's going on in I Russia. Say, it's not a very gay-friendly culture right They now. just passed a law saying that at no time can there be any public discussion of gay rights or gay relationships anywhere where children might hear it. Yeah. Which is just still pretty back prehistoric. In the 50s there, yeah. He was invited to the film festival and he wrote the following letter. Thank you for your kind invitation. As someone who has enjoyed visiting Russia in the past, who can also claim a degree of Russian ancestry, it would make me happy to say yes. However, as a gay man, I must decline. And Good he him, sent man. a message, which I think is cool. Good for him. Good for him. <laughs> Another uh, star came out this week. Lucas Cruikshank, you know uh, Fred, the Fred videos on YouTube? You ever seen Fred? Fred is a phenomenon. It started off as a YouTube thing, and now he's got his own show on Nickelodeon. It's like this monster thing. You guys know Fred? It's, it's, uh, it's unbearable. It's really so annoying. <laughs> but Fred has come out as being gay, and we were all not shocked at all. <laughs> here's, here's Fred, for those of you who have never seen Fred. Here's a little Fred video. Holy shit. Yeah. We were all shocked. It was like finding out that uh, Affleck was going to be Batman. It was that kind of shocked. And then he got a shout out from Cher, by the way, when he broke the news. Really? Which is like a Catholic getting blessed by the Pope, pretty much. <laughs> the cameraman who uh, got assaulted by Kanye West is suing. There's a surprise. I don't know if you guys remember the video, but this is after he said, don't talk. Don't talk to anyone who's ever talked to anyone else, and don't talk to anyone who knows anyone, and don't talk to, you know, that guy. Uh, after he said that, there was a paparazzo. And I'm not a big fan of the paparazzo. I think they, they can be invasive and, 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 at best, rude and inconsiderate, and sometimes dangerous. But this guy was pretty fucking funny. Because after Kanye West had never talked to me, he was like, why can't I talk to you? Why can't I talk to you? He was like, he was poking <laughs> right. him a little bit. So much so that Kanye West, well, kicked his ass. Here's the video. I mean, what's going on? Why, why, why can't we talk to you? I mean, why? I mean, I, no, no, come on, Kanye. I don't want to fight with you. Dude, seriously, I don't want to fight with you, man. I'm just asking. But you didn't tell me. What you're trying to do is get me in trouble. So I stuff off you have to pay you like 250000 No, 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 no. Yeah. This guy uh, said he needed to walk with crutches for two weeks after the attack. What did he do to him, man? Did he say? Hurt his feelings. <laughs> you know, You're not a good photographer. He's like, it really bummed me out. Yeah. Man. I walk on crutches. Have you seen Mel Gibson recently? No. 57-year-old Mel Gibson? Talking to pap paparazzo, someone caught him coming out of the gym this week. You got to see this picture of Mel Gibson. Look at that. How old I've is never he? seen him look so jacked. He's huge. 57 years old. They say he's getting ready for Expendables 3. He's been cast in Expendables 3. He's got some fucking sugar tits, don't he? <laughs> look, at those, look at those guns, how huge his arms are. Yeah. They say he's been list, lifting incredibly heavy things. He's been doing curls with his anti-Semitism. <laughs> Which is enormous, by the way. Very large. 
Sylvester Stallone was like, in this movie, you might have to do some judo. He's like, no. No, I won't do that. <laughs> Greedy lazy! Another day, another uh, nude photo scandal in Hollywood. Who? Uh, Demi Lovato. Are you familiar with Demi Lovato? What are you good then making that face? I don't know. One day I want it to be somebody I know. Here's a picture of Demi Lovato. Here's a, look how hot she is. She's adorable. That was the little girl from what, Sonny with a Chance? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Look at her butt chin. <laughs> She's got I want to have Affleck anal Affleck sex chin, with her man. butt chin. That's Ben Affleck chin right there. <laughs> Word is there you are... You park a bike in that chin. Look at it. That cleave. Over 20 images of what appeared to be her in a raft of compromising positions, says the uh, quote. Didn't she just get through some uh, uh, trial? Didn't she cut herself or some such shit? Was, was she, she the cutter? She was, She was? Right? She was the one with the, way, the, uh, the eating disorder and the cutting, yeah, right? and then she's got like an album. Then she started to look good and she said, I'm going to take a raft of compromising position photos. <laughs> but they have not been leaked. We can't find them anywhere, which I find unacceptable. In a world where NSA secrets can be leaked... <laughs> where we can find out that they're listening to our phone calls, where we can find out secret military details about our government. I want to see nude pictures of Demi Lovato, please. Where's the Edward Snowden in this case? <laughs> Somebody get on this. Priorities, people. This woman had her own issues with the nude photos that got released. Livia Munn from the newsroom. You watch that show? She was on G4, of course, for many yeah, years. Yeah, I guess she, a lot of people know her from Newsroom. I always think of her as the girl from G4. Uh, Attack of the Show she was yeah, on Attack for a of the while. Show. Uh, she's really good on Newsroom. She, she's got a sense of humor, too, Olivia. She was in her friend's house who had a swing in their living room. That's pretty cool to have a swing that you can swing on, to have fun in your living room. Sex thing. No, it's just a swing, you pervert. <laughs> Muppet thing. Muppet thing? Yeah. It just sounds like the kind of thing you're like, why are there so many? So she's on this swing and she's got her boyfriend videotaping her and this is what happened. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. Let's take a look at that one more time. I think it's, I think it's worth seeing. She posted this herself, so... At least the boyfriend put down the camera. Oh! She fucking broke that swing like she was Fat Kev Smith. Yeah. <laughs> she dislocated her shoulder, by the oh, way. Oh, bummer, man. But uh, she's, she's fine. She got a good sense of humor. She posted it, though. She posted it on her own Twitter site, so right that's pretty cool. Uh, we might need a new segment at some point called TV Shows That Will Suck, because this week there's some good ones. NBC has announced they're doing a new show about a mermaid who decides to come out of the water and get a job tending bar in Miami. I wouldn't be able to make that up if you said, come up with a shitty sitcom. I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to make that up. Are they calling, is it? No title yet, but it's about a real life mermaid who decides to have a little fun and get out of the water while she's tending bar at an oceanfront attraction in Miami, Florida. She's gonna have the clamshell bra and shit like that? This sounds like it should have been made in the 60s when they were making sitcoms about funny things like, like POW camps from the Nazis in World War II. <laughs> oh, good. Rambo's going to wake its way to television. The, the Rambo series. It's not going to be him, though, is it? He's in negotiations. He's going to be involved on some creative level, potentially reprising his role as John Rambo. Every episode he'd be in? Yeah, every episode I'd be in, why not be in? You, you drew first blood! They spit on me? Call me baby killer? <laughs> I don't you, know why you said Are you sure you can handle this workload, Sly? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not greedy and lazy. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> we do have a segment called the Movies That Will Suck, however, that's for sure. Hulk Hogan has announced there's a. Um... <laughs> I didn't even have to say anything. Story's I just said Hulk done, Hogan. Man, that's it. Uh, there is a movie in the works based on the story of his life. <laughs> Brother. I know, he had Hulkamania and whatnot. Uh, he said he's read the treatment for the script and they've nailed the story like they were living in my shoes, he said. 
Well, when you've lived the life that Hulkster has, I mean, absolutely. He would like Chris Hemsworth to play him in the film. Oh. Wouldn't we all? I'd like Chris Hemsworth to play me in the Hollywood Babylon movie. I'd like Chris Hemsworth to play me in my bed. Stop it. <laughs> play me like his girlfriend, man. <laughs> Affleck as Hogan. <laughs> And we now know officially what Sean Connery's last film will be. Uh, everyone thought it was League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That's when he retired yeah, initially. Yeah. But he has done the voice work in an animated feature film that was produced entirely in Scotland. Because, you know, he's very patriotic when it comes to Scot mm -hmm. Scotland. And it's called Sir Billy. And oh, as if it wasn't bad enough that League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was his last film. Here is the uh, synopsis for Sir Billy. Here comes the awesome. <laughs> Sir Billy, Sir Billy is a skateboarding grandfather and veterinarian who goes above and beyond the call of duty fighting villainous policemen to save the last beaver in Scotland. With the help of a goat named Gordon. That's not fair. You don't go to a senile, you don't go to a senile old man and, and say, Sean, Sean. We're making this movie in Scotland. Would you do it for us? What? <laughs> Is it pudding time? <laughs> no, just say this. Just say these words. I'm Sir Billy. <laughs> that's embarrassing. The man goes out with that film. If that's, I mean, but he, you're right. He is very patriotic and shit. He loves to, to up with Scotland. I guess somebody talked to him and said, come on, man, be Sir Billy. Skateboard, kids love skateboards and shit. <laughs> or maybe he was just like, What's the plot? And they're like, you gotta save a lot of beaver. He's like, pussy galore, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> There's a guy in Canada, a, uh, a dentist named I thought, Dr. I thought you meant Wayne Gretzky. I was like, yeah. Not everybody in Canada is Wayne Gretzky. This, this dentist is named Michael Zook. He bought at auction many years ago John Lennon's tooth that had been pulled from his head. Well, I guess that's where you pull a tooth, isn't it? <laughs> It'd be weird if they took it out of his ass or something. That'd be strange. Not the rare rectal tooth. <laughs> no. <laughs> that grants wishes. It was a, a rotted, impacted tooth that had been removed, and then someone put it up for auction. He bought it. He has announced that he now wants to clone a new John Lennon from DNA found in the tooth. Is he allowed to do that? It's his tooth. I guess he can do whatever he wants. But I mean, is The there question is, can you do yeah, that? Yeah, is there somewhere to do that? My favorite part of this story. Scientists are skeptical that he'll be able to pull it off. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know why? Because you can't fucking do it, that's why. He says, um, most people would say I'm crazy. No, so I'm not the only one. <laughs> Fuck you. He fucking busted your balls, man. It would be great to say I had a small part in bringing back one of Rock's greatest stars. That would be mind blowing, said Dr. Michael Zook, who drops a lot of fucking acid. <laughs> Cut to some giant fucking John Lennon just walking through the city. <laughs> oh, it all went horribly wrong. <laughs> I'm going to crush you all. <laughs> I'm going to destroy you. Bring me your giant Asian women. John Lennon is lonely. Just imagine what I could do to you. Goo 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 <laughs> And while we're talking about teeth, Madonna at the age of 55 this week. Wow, really? Is that where she is now? She just turned 55 about a week ago. She was walking the streets of Rome, showing off her latest accessory, a uh, gold grill in her teeth. You see the picture? Can we throw up? There she is. Mom, stop it, you're embarrassing me. She's like, she's like the, the, I had an aunt who would show up at our family picnics in hot pants. And she was like 50-something, and there was just too much hot and not enough pant going on there. 
And you're just like, at some point, at what point do you just say, look, I'm 55 years old, I can't be this anymore. She is a material. <laughs> Oh my God, that was the most heartfelt plea I've ever heard in my life. It's like the guy trapped Please on Small World. <laughs> <laughs> However, she reminds me of somebody with those teeth. Can we show the next picture who I thought was something? Yeah, that's yes, what I was thinking. Yes. Of. Right? This is Jaws from Moonraker. It's a world of laughter, a world of fun. <laughs> Every week, being the geeks that we are, Kevin and I like to talk about the geek news. <laughs> Disneyland, speaking of which has announced they are adding a new Thor attraction to their theme park. Get the fuck out of here, really? It is, well, to promote the upcoming release of Thor The Dark World, yeah. but uh, Daily Variety had the story. They said it will be in a, uh, an interactive attraction where you'll be able to visit Asgard and come face-to-face -face with the mighty Avenger Thor himself. Holy shit. Better, better to come face-to-face -face than fucking dick-to-butt, man. <laughs> he looks pretty powerful. And uh, since we are here in Gotham, it only makes sense that I celebrate the fact that I can finally get Adam West and Burt Ward where I've always wanted them, right next to my penis. <laughs> Diesel Underwear announced their 1966 Batman Underwear collection this week. Oh, really? We've got a picture of the ones I'm currently wearing. There we are. Look, I've got Adam West right next to my ball. In the bat boat, which is uh, appropriate because I'm sometimes incontinent. So when I wet myself, at least he's in the boat. <laughs> Barely holding in that dude's bat pole, if you know yeah, what I'm saying. Man. Really? Um, I don't know that uh, I'm going to benefit from this. Diesel doesn't generally take care of plus-size boys like myself. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll Kev. have to buy three pair, cut them up, sew them together. <laughs> it's a little bit like watching a whole episode if you walk around me. <laughs> if you run around real fast. <laughs> Maybe you can wait till they make the Affleck Batman shorts and you just rub yourself all day while you wear them. Oh my God, I would do the truffle shuffle for that. <laughs> Each and every week, we also like to take a look at the legend that is Liam Neeson's cock. There are many stories. Many stories about its enormous size. We're here to set the legend straight. I know. The show, man. The show has gone so fast. You guys been having a good by. time so far, man? Thank you so much. This is uh, this week's Legends about the size of Liam Neeson's penis. You can add, of course, your own if you go to neesoncock.com. You're always welcome to. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It's been sexually... Excuse me? It, let me try that again. <laughs> It's been accused of sexually harassing the mayor of San Diego, Bob Filner. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? The sad Hulk music plays every time he goes flaccid. <laughs> the penis just walks down the road. <laughs> Very sad. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big that the Daily Mail newspaper commented on how svelte Kevin looked while he walked it on a leash near his home. Just saying, in comparison... I, I had just forgotten. Everything was looking up. My buddy was Batman. You gotta bring that back and shit. Bring you back to Earth, that's all. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big... It rescued Dick Van Dyke from a burning car. <laughs> he might be the Hollywood helper. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? 
Some say it's an animal. To be with an animal. Animal. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. The NSA had to build a $2 billion data storage facility in Utah just to record its measurements. <laughs> Writes Edward Snowden. He's the one who sent that in. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Rick Moranis killed a dentist to feed it. <laughs> feed me, Seymour. <laughs> that took me a second, man. I was like, what? <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It was seen this week with a gold grill in its teeth. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Ben Affleck is going to play it in the movie. <laughs> Horrible casting. Horrible casting. And lastly, Liam Neeson's cock is so big. The Carnegie Deli just named a sandwich after it. No bread, just meat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of New York City, have you had a good time this evening? Stop it. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. You guys are so damn fucking sweet. Give it up for our master of ceremonies, without whom we would not have had three years of Babylon, Ralph Garman. And my good friend and Babel brother, Mr. Kevin Smith. And that is Hollywood Babylon for this week. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Babel the fuck off. Good night, New York! <laughs>